Hi everybody, it's Melissa from Walking Through the Woods. I'm going to do something a little different in this video. This one I'm going to recap projects I've done in the past that y'all thought in the comments would not stand the test of time. That they would fail and they would fall apart. Some of them did, some of them didn't. So I'm super excited to go through some of my most popular projects and see if y'all were right. The first one we're going to cover is the one most people thought would fail in like six months, which is my small retaining wall. And I'm happy to say that surprisingly, this looks exactly the same as right after I built it. You can see it's not perfectly straight, but it wasn't right when I finished anyway. As far as I can tell, nothing has moved at all. Now, when I constructed this, I did a layer of drainage pebbles behind the wall. And then I also did like a solid base to set the blocks onto. But beyond that, I didn't do any other measures. And a typical retaining wall would have more drainage and other things to prevent the soil from pushing against the block than what I did. I think the reason that this has held up through two winters now in Minnesota, which sees a lot of freezing and thawing, is that the soil it's holding back is sloped not against the wall so it's not really holding a lot it's actually sloped next to the wall and rain isn't running down against it very often this retaining wall is not a permanent permanent solution because you can see this stump from a tree that came down here i'm going to be grinding that in the future and we're going to be putting in a cement driveway so we'll be doing a different more substantial retaining wall when that happens next up is a project that has not held up as well and that is my foundation patch it's not for the reason people think though. I put this thin eighth inch sheet of plywood on the fascia and that's held up fine actually, but the, the metal flashing on the top of it is chipping and coming apart in some areas coming off of the floor and the patched areas on my cement foundation are really, really flaking off. They didn't take to paint at all and I've actually had to repaint them twice already. This video is sponsored by Omaze. The Omaze experience seeks to revolutionize charitable giving. So in this May's financial freedom campaign, you can enter for your chance to win $100,000, all while supporting the charity Together We Rise, which helps foster children in America. Entering is easy, just follow the link in the description of this video and I'll show you how on the screen here. Simply go to omaze.com backslash welcome to the woods, scroll to read about the giveaway and together we rise. Enter and continue to check out. Imagine what you could do with $100,000 if you win the sweepstakes. You could start a business. You could invest in all the fancy tools you've ever wanted. You could do so many awesome things. I love that Omaze is making charitable giving accessible and exciting. So be sure to follow the link in the description of this video to enter for your chance to win $100,000 in cash, donations, support. Together we rise. A very, very worthy cause. So I'm just going to fix up these problems really quick with a broom. I'm going to brush the area clear and make sure that any of the chipping paint is truly off of the home's foundation. Now, if you remember when I did this, I used a product called Presto Patch and it's meant for masonry and cement, but I don't know. It must not have been paintable. I thought that it said it was but maybe I didn't read the label carefully enough. I did use a primer as well, like an exterior primer, but the paint is just not sticking to the spots where I patched. So I would not do it again. I'd use something else that I tested in an inconspicuous spot. This is so visible on the front of my house with it chipping like this, it's embarrassing. So I'd be sure to touch this up every time it happens. Now I'm also gonna shoot some big nails in the middle flashing to get that area reattached. I'm thinking that this is just some band-aids. Again, this was never intended to be a long-term solution, just a kind of quick hide as I figured out long-term what I want to do with this porch because another project I've done that surprisingly has not held up is painting the porch floor. Now, the wood porch floor on this front porch was not in the best condition when I tried to patch it and repaint it. But unfortunately, especially right in front of the bed swing, where we put our feet a lot and sometimes water from rain gets on there, it has chipped up a ton. At one point, I came with a wire brush and pulled up all the loose paint and had to do a new layer of primer and a whole new set of paint on this porch. But again, this spring, it is starting to chip. 
and so I'm just sick of it. I think long term, this porch floor and the fascia and everything is going to need kind of a big overhaul. Thankfully, the bed swing that I built has seen absolutely zero problems. The cords have not worn. There's been no sagging ceiling joists or whatever else people said would go wrong. It's not fallen off of the ceiling or come off the hooks. So that has gotten tons of use and has been such a wonderful addition to our front porch. Now with these quick updates and just like making it look nice again, I think that the porch is ready for another warm season, but we'll see about next year if I can tackle redoing it again. Moving to the back porch now, a lot of people thought that the concrete step that I refinished was like paint and would start chipping right after the cold season. If you remember, I covered it in this specialty Microtech topping from DIYConcrete.com. And I'm really happy to report that it held up beautifully, albeit being a little dirty. I think because I chose a light color concrete, it shows dirt on it, but I can very easily just brush that off with either a you know scrub brush or a pressure washer it has held up so so well nowhere is it chipping granted i only did it last summer so it's only seen one cold winter but so far so good i do imagine i'll have to reapply the sealer that i put on it once every couple years probably my most controversial project has been my counter my faux marble counter that i tried to do epoxy resin on failed and then I repainted and sealed with polycrylic. Now, the polycrylic has held up okay. It definitely cleans fine when I wipe it down. My island gets really, really used and abused by my kids, and every day I'm cooking in my kitchen. So I would say overall, over the last two years, I'm happy. However, there's a couple little spots, like here and here, where you can see that the paint chipped down all the way to the epoxy, and the edge is showing a lot of paint chips. The epoxy layer underneath this paint and poly job is, as far as I know, quite yellow but still intact. You can also see as I go along the edge of here that you can see where the two pieces of plywood are starting to separate a little bit. There's also this spot where I set an orange and the acid from the orange literally ate through the paint layer. And so I usually just cover that up with like a decoration. <laughs> But overall, I would say that the counter has been able to withstand the use of our family pretty well, especially given how inexpensive this project was. And if I didn't have the epoxy underneath the paint, it probably would be sticking to the plywood even better. There you go. These are the projects that did work out and some that didn't. Did any of them surprise you? I'd love to know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to the woods. We'll catch you again next time.